going to learn about how to add and subtract decimals. There's a couple uh, very important rules when we're doing this. Okay, we're going to start off with a, a, a word problem here. And let's say uh, somebody that owns a burger shop goes to the local, local farmer's market and buys 11 and 39 hundredths pounds of potatoes and 14 and 27 hundredths pounds of potatoes. And you want to figure out how many potatoes that is in all, how many pounds that is. Okay, we need to set up this problem as an addition problem. When we do that, the most important thing you do is line up your decimal places so that your place values are all, or your places are all lined up. So let's start with the top number. 11.39 plus 14.27. Notice how my decimals are lined up. I'm gonna put that decimal right at the bottom right away, okay, so I do not forget it. That would change your answer drastically if you do forget it. So then we just start as a normal addition problem. So we start with nine plus seven, which will give us 16. We need to carry that one up top. Three plus two is five, plus one is six. We don't need to carry anything. One plus four is five and one plus one is two. So when we, when we add this all together, we get 25 and 66 hundredths pounds of potatoes in all. So that is how you do a simple addition problem with decimals. Why don't you try two problems right now? Sometimes these problems can be a little bit difficult to set up. So let's look at this problem. We have 9 and 7 tenths plus 24 hundredths. If you don't line up your decimals, you will get an incorrect answer. So sometimes you have to make sure that your decimal places are lined up first before you write the rest of the number. Watch what I mean. Since we were, since we started learning addition, we, were, we would always start from the right and, and work our way left to write the number. If we do that, we are going to get an incorrect answer because our decimals are not lined up. So, that is incorrect. Don't do that. This is what you do. First, start by writing the top number, and then I'm going to put that decimal point right below it, right away. Then we can fill in the rest. Okay, now if there's no digit above the one, one of the, the columns, we automatically just transfer down that number. Okay, then seven plus two is nine. We're gonna put that decimal point and then we transfer down the nine and we get nine and 94 hundredths. Okay, much different than what we would have gotten here and it would be a lot more difficult with that decimal place. Okay, we treat subtraction the same way we treat addition by lining up our decimals and finding the answer. Let's look at this problem. 32 and 7 tenths minus 15 and 33 hundredths. So we're going to set this up like just like we did with our addition problem. I'm going to write the top number first. And then I'm going to put that decimal place, decimal point, in there. And now I have it lined up. Now, it's not as easy as addition that we can just drop down that 3. What do you think we have to put there? If you're thinking that we have to put a 0, you would be correct. So we're going to put a 0. In this case, that 0 is called a placeholder. It holds the place value of that hundredths. Okay, can we take away 3 from 0? No, you can't do that. So we have to change, we have to borrow. Okay, that 0 becomes a 10 and the seven becomes a six. So and then we can do 10 minus three is seven, six minus three is three. Put that decimal point in there. Again, we can't take away five from two, so we must borrow. So that two becomes a 12, and the three becomes a two. 12 minus five is seven, and two minus one is one. One way to check our answer is if we can estimate. So 32.7, we can estimate to 33. 
15.33, we can estimate to 15. Okay? When we do the subtraction problem, we get the answer of 18. Is 18 close to 17 and 37 hundredths? The answer is yes. Therefore, we know that our answer is reasonable. Why don't you try the next two problems?